Hi guys, Rich from Art of Smart. Welcome back to another YouTube video. Now, as you can see from the right front side of me here, I haven't shrunk. This is a very big rack that is going into one of our older age projects. So, first and foremost, to start off with, this is a 42U Sanus rack. Um, so this is gonna house all the components for everything in the project. Now, there's been lots of videos on this job because, well, it's 10,000 square foot for a start. So lots going on. As you can see here, um, so this is just the ground floor drawing for the house, loads going on in it. So what will happen with a project like this is our designers will do the documentation for it. So this is the layout and well, they've done a pretty good job because it's absolutely identical. Um, and then the rat gets built in our rat lab here uh, at HQ in York. So some of you will be aware, um, we've got a dedicated rack builder called Kieran. So Kieran's job is to build the racks for us full time and this rat build lab is now his lair. However, um, we also have the online training academy, AOS 3.0. Um, so as part of the training academy, we're teaching people all the skills. And one of the skills is obviously a rat building. So I've done a couple of lessons on the rat building. Now, usually Kieran would talk you through his own racks, but with me being here doing it now, lets you know that I built this one. So I wasn't letting Kieran take any credit whatsoever. And I thought I'm gonna jump in and do the YouTube video. Anyway, let's get on to it. Now, because this project is a very big project, uh, what we've actually got is another one of these on site, which we're using as our termination box. So we have a normal kind of setup like we have off the back of this rack with our anaconda. And um, we've got that down here and Cam's gonna show you that in the B-roll now. So all these tails will get terminated on site into the termination box and the ends made off on site, so they're absolutely perfect. Sometimes we may choose that to do that in the lab here. However, uh, because of time scales, rack's gone to site and the lads are gonna do that on site. So that termination box actually houses the majority of our network components and we'll have in our router, which is why you can see no router in here. It also has the main uh, switches and all the network for the most of the property. But we do have one network switch in here, which I'll come back onto in a second. So although we do have a dedicated rack room, adjacent to that is the client's wine room. Now, obviously the client didn't want to compromise on space on the wine room. So it means the wine room and the rack room are identical, which will look nice on the doors and the fronts, so everything will be symmetrical. Uh, but it means our rack room is very, very, very tight. Luckily our designer Pete, AKA the wizard, has done a 3D render. Um, so we could decide the room and make sure it was all gonna work. Boys are gonna enter that here for you. So as you can see on the render, we've got our termination rack in the corner there. We've got some lighting panels, we've got the electrical fuse board, and then we've got our rack here, which can be pulled outside the door. Now the client, because the rack is so big, has actually had the doors put in at eight foot, so it can just pull it out for maintenance, which is absolutely great. Anyway, let's get to it. So starting up at the very top here, we've got the Control 4 CA10. So the CA10 is Control 4's flagship processor. It's an absolute supercomputer. It actually has four times the processing power as an EA5, and we have a YouTube video on a CA10, exactly what CA10 does here. So that actually has no inputs and outputs on the processor. So it has no way of controlling anything. It is just a main brain, um, which then brings me down to this one here, which is an EA5, which is their next level down processor. And this processor would run a house up to between six to 10,000 square foot. Have seen them going houses larger, not on our projects, but on other projects. Not quite on how that went. Um, so we use this as a slave controller to then provide audio streams, um, which when we go around the back of the rack, we'll see that, which then come down into our audio matrix. Next up, we've got a switch. So this is a Ragnis AN210 switch. It's 24 ports. Uh, it does have PoE, um, but we'll actually have the PoE ports disabled for this particular application. Next up, we've got the Heat Vision CCTV system. So this is a 32 channel NVR, which will allow us to have up to 32 cameras. Now on this particular project, we're not actually connecting the cameras directly into it. We're gonna connect it into a VLAN on a switch in the termination box, which also means we've got one less tail coming through to the rack. Coming down here, we've got another one. We've had a couple. This is a mesh vent. The reason we put mesh vents in is for a little bit of cooling on the rack. I mean, luckily, this room where this particular rack's going is gonna have air conditioning in it. However, if it didn't, um, we tend to use solid racks to give the chimney effect and get the heat out the rack. Next down, we've got the package PDU. So this is the device that will allow us to come onto the screen to do a local reboot, we can see measurements, we can control the outlets and we can control the devices in the rack. This is what will let client do a reset. So rather than going into the rack, they can reset the sky boxes, the control for system, the network, the Wi-Fi, And we actually have another one of these in the network and termination box. Now, when everything's working perfectly fine, 
and we need to do a reset, we can actually do that directly through Control 4 touchscreen, or we can access this remotely and do that from there too. We then have a solid blank. Now, we're just waiting for some more, but this is where the AOS rack plate will go. By the time Cam, get, Cam gets around to B-rolling this rack, that's probably gonna be in, installed. Which then brings us down to these shelves here, which don't look like they have much going on them. These are our saw shelves. So this is where we've got the coaxes ready for the client skybox. We have spare data cables ready for those. Uh, we've got even HDMI cables labeled up. This one say here is going to input three on the HDMI matrix. And then all the data cables labeled up going to the switch. Now we don't actually tend to put client sources in here. We just make allowances ready for them. So we usually have main source here, We'll have a couple of sources on this shelf and a couple of sources on this shelf. I think this one's actually ready for three sources in case the client has a couple of Apple TVs or maybe Roku's. Coming down from here, we're using a Pulse A Neo X matrix. So this particular model is a 10 by 10 matrix. So what that means is we've got 10 inputs, which are then gonna be going to 10 outputs. So that could be 10 sources, such as the CCTV, Skyboxes, Apple TVs, etc., And they're gonna move forward and they're gonna connect over uh, data cables, in this case, Cat6A, going out to the TVs. At the TV end, we have a receiver and that receiver will convert back to HDMI, which will give us our pictures on the TV. We also then, coming down here, have an audio matrix. Now this is also a Pulse 8 product. Now, Pulse8 have actually got um, an arrangement with Control4 slash SnapAV at the moment, and they are manufacturing video matrices and audio matrices for them in the UK. Now, to be fair to them, very good products, and for 10 by 10 matrices, this is what we use, and this particular audio matrix is a 1632. So what that means is we've got 16 inputs to up to 32 outputs. Now, usually we used to use the Control4 24 by 24 matrix, which was brilliant, Control 5 actually discontinued that. Bad idea. Um, and they've brought out a new one, which is 16 by 16. Now, because if we look a bit further down, on this particular job, we're using the Triad 8 zone 16 channel um, amplifiers. So we've got three of those, which tells you we've got 24 zones of audio, just in multi-room audio. Plus we've got an AVR, plus we've got a garden array that's wired into the termination box. So we've got lots of audio, so we had to use this particular model here. Now, I've just mentioned them, but I'm going to come down and go through them a little bit further. We've got three triad amplifiers. So usually, we would actually use the four-zone amplifiers. However, because of size and limitations on this rack, we've used the eight-zone ones. So we've got three of those. Now, the third one on this particular job is actually going to be installed on phase two. However, to make our installer's life easy a little bit later on, we've actually terminated this. This is one of ours that we keep in stock. This will then be removed before it goes to site. So then when they add it in phase two and get the hardware, it's just a case of plugging it in. Below that then, we've got a Triad 700 watt rack amp. That is actually gonna be connected through to this AVR for the client's cinema room. And then this AVR is an Anthem MRX 740. So that is gonna be for the cinema room surround sound. And the cinema room is in a 5.2.4 uh, Dolby Atmos setup. Uh, and a really cool media room. Last but not, lot, not least on this rack at the bottom here, we've got the APC UPS. So this is gonna be a battery backup system. In case there is a power failure, this is gonna keep device online probably for around 30 minutes. However, it's just off at the minute, ready for transit. So that's all the components from the front. Let's spin around, take you through the back, because let's be honest, that's the bit you wanna see. So I'm gonna take you through the back of the rack as well. Um, I'll be a little bit faster, um, and explain what's going on with some of these components at the back here. So starting up at the very top, we've got our Control4 CA10 processor. Now this processor is actually Control4's flagship model, um, and it's got two fans, two data cables, and what you can't see is it has two SSDs and two power supplies. So hopefully what you're getting by that is this controller provides maximum redundancy. If anything fails out of those components, that processor will actually email our support and let us know we've got a problem so we can arrange an advanced replacement. Next one down, we've got the Control 4 EF5, and this EF5 is providing the audio streams from up here, which are coming down and into our audio matrix and then onto the multi-room audio system. This particular processor also has some contacts and some relays and some serial RS-232 connections. However, on this particular rack, we're utilizing two separate IO expanders, which are gonna be housed 
inside the termination box, thus we're not using those connections. You might have seen, as we're starting to go through this rack, we have a lot of these bars in place. Now what these are for, is these are lacing bars. So to help us dress the cables, take the strain off everything, we use those. And then for cable management on the side of the racks, we use cable trays, um, which the cables dress down on. Now, very controversial this, but I actually personally prefer tie wraps in a rack. However, as this rack gets its final snag and as the components get the final commissioning, these will then be removed and replaced with Velcros as it started to happen from the bottom here. That just means that we're not doing things twice um, and those come off them. So let's continue with the rest of this. We've then got our switch. So there's lots of red data cables coming out of this switch um, and they are general data going to all the components in this rack. Most of these are red apart from the two on the end which are pink because at Art of Smart with Rainbow Spaghetti, we use pink for uplink and that's connecting back through to our core switch in the network and termination rack. There's two of those because Kieran has actually configured this rack with a lag network. So it's lag network port so we can get more traffic through. Coming down then, we've got the CCTV hard drive. Um, this is a Hikvision MVR, this particular model. And as I mentioned before, we're not using the network ports on the back of here. We're using uh, network switches within the rack. So this is just providing a recording facility and HDMI into the video matrix. We then have this here, which is our power distribution unit. So lots of IEC connectors on this, plug it in, go into our main components. And sometimes when we come to source shelves, we come to extension leads like this, so we can plug molded plugs in. It also makes it easier for things such as a Sky Engineer to just come in and plug the box in. Um, and, but same as everything in the rack, these are all labeled. So this particular strip here is PDU3 output six. So that'll be going to there. Last but not least on this particular device, we have this which is a temperature and humidity sensor. That particular component there is a grand total of 140 pounds. Yes, there was not an error there. And Cam on the cam has just pulled a serious face. Uh, but yeah, the temperature and humidity sensor is gonna allow us to monitor the temperature of the rack. And if it gets too hot, cause alerts, maybe the AC's filled. Um, but it means we always know the temperature of all our racks. Coming down then, the source shelves. So this particular one for Sky. So I've got the coax cables ready. I've got a HDMI cable ready for the Sky box, which is all labeled. These are all labeled. And then we've got some data cables ready on there. We then have a couple more source shelves before coming down to this device. So on here, we've got all our Cat6A video distribution cables, which the reason we use Cat6A is for the bandwidth. So this matrix here has 10 inputs, 10 outputs and then the audio connections, which on this particular project, we're not using the audio down mixing feature. I mean, personally, I hate TV speakers, uh, TV audio coming out of ceiling speakers, but that's just me. Coming down then to the next components. However, just before I do, you may notice on the side of this rack, the couple of little stickers. Now, unless you've been living under a rock, you will know that at Smart we use an asset management system, which means we track all the serial numbers, MAC addresses, all the devices, warranties can be done by Simpro, which we use for our job management software. Um, if any of you are interested in Simpro, I've actually done lots of webinars with them as well as having lots of coming up. There'll be a little link in the description um, of this video. If you wanna click that, we also get your discount. So coming down then, we got some candy sticks. Now, these are all our RCA connectors, Planet Waves cables coming out of the back of the audio matrix, which are then coming down and coming into the amps. From the amps, we then have the speaker wires coming out, which are coming down into our Anaconda. We have three of those, and that's three times eight channel amps. And then the last two components here for the audio is gonna be the rack amp, and then we've got an AVR for the cinema room. The final component down the bottom there that you can't actually quite see is the UPS. While I'm down here, I'm just gonna show you quickly our anacondas. So when this goes in on site and these get terminated, these will get run off into the rack and everything will get terminated up. So that's it, another Art of Smart rack walkthrough. There'll be a full video on this project coming soon once this goes to site. Um, if you like this video, don't forget all the usual stuff. Like, subscribe, press the bell for notifications, and we'll see you on the next one. Thank <laughs> you.